Welcome back, Irish fans, to Breaking Down Braves Boys podcast. Uh, Notre Dame just added a schedule change about a day ago against Detroit Mercy, a team we played last year. And we've got Mr. Tony Paul on to preview the game with us, give some insight about Detroit Mercy. So, Mr. Paul, welcome on. Hey, thanks for having me. Mm-hmm. So, I guess we'll start it off. About five minutes before we filmed this, they just played Michigan State, and they really hung with them. So, what can you kind of tell us about your thoughts about that game and what it tells you about Detroit Mercy? Yeah, a little bit surprising that they that they hung as much as they did. Detroit hadn't played a game until tonight because they were supposed to play in the Kentucky tournament, and that all got canceled for them when they had a COVID test or positive result. So they hadn't played, so we didn't really know what to expect. But we did hear coming into the season that Detroit Mercy would have a little bit more around Antoine Davis. He's uh, This is his third year for him and third year for Mike Davis at, at Detroit Mercy. And the last two years, Antoine's been great and, you know, been top 10 in the nation in scoring both years, but he hasn't had anything around him. And they, you know, they haven't been able to win many games because of that. This year, they do have guys around. They got several transfers coming in and you saw some of the impact that those guys can make, uh, particularly Matt Johnson. Uh, uh, but they got a few other guys too that transferred over. So they have some veterans uh, that they just didn't have around Antoine the last uh, couple of years. And, it showed tonight, uh, you know, when Davis couldn't get his shot, Johnson stepped up and, and kept Detroit in that game. And really, if they didn't lose, if Detroit didn't lose their two big guys to foul trouble down the stretch, they might have won that game. Sure. Uh, you touched on a couple of their transfers. Can you give us a quick overview on all five of the starters and what kind of what they bring to the table and if there's anything Notre Dame can exploit about any of them? Yeah, uh, well, obviously, I mean, the whole, you know, the whole – situation when Detroit Mercy is going to revolve around Davis. Uh, this is a guy who's, you know, been on, you know, on many draft NBA draft boards, you know, since his freshman season. Um, and he's, I mean, he's been, like I said, top 10 in the, in the nation in scoring each of the last two years. He's set records with three pointers. He broke Steph Curry's freshman three point record. Um, so he's the guy. I mean, that's the guy you have to slow down. And Michigan state did about as good as you could do with him tonight. Uh, I believe Davis finished, in the 20s tonight, but didn't make a three, I don't think. And, and that's very rare uh, for him. So Michigan State did about as good as they could shutting down Davis and, and learned that Detroit Mercy's got some other pieces, and that's why the game was so close. But you look around, uh, you know, Bull Cool, uh, he's a grad a grad transfer from Cal Baptist. He was big tonight, especially down low. When he went out of the game, that, that kind of flipped the switch a little bit, flipped the momentum um, toward Michigan State when he fouled out of tonight's game. So he's a guy to keep an eye on. Again, Matt Johnson, I mentioned him, St. Bonaventure, um, good shooter, long-range um, threat. Uh, he's basically the, 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 the B shooter behind Antoine if Antoine's not getting his shot. and He came up big in the second half today, which is why Detroit Mercy was able to hang. Uh, Tareen Thompson's another transfer from Seton Hall. Um, you know, the, the scouting report on him, he's a big dude, you know, 6'11", 245, but the scouting report on him is, uh, when he's when he's into it, when his motor's running, he's going to be good, and he, he can take over a game. Uh, but he, he runs hot and cold a little bit on the on the court. But uh, he's another guy to watch. Um, you know, another a guy that is back, Chris Brandon. Uh, he's a he's a swing man. You can rely on Markel Frazier is another transfer from Idaho. Uh, he played all right tonight. Uh, and then another guy that's back, a forward, Willie Asani. He's um, there's another big guy. He was the other big guy that fouled out. And uh, once Detroit loses their bigs, um, they're going to have trouble stopping teams from scoring down low. But with those guys in the game, their their defense is, is impressive. And that's something that Detroit Mercy just hasn't had uh, for several years is defense. They try to run you out of the building. And, you know, if Antoine Davis, the last two years, if Antoine Davis was off even a little bit, they were going to lose and probably lose bad. Now they've got actually some defense. And they've got some depth on offense. So, uh, they're going to be interesting to watch. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how they handle going to Notre Dame at this last minute game. Uh, but more importantly for Detroit Mercy, uh, they all of a sudden their stock rose tonight when it comes to the Horizon League. They were picked ninth before the season in the Horizon League, and I think a lot of people are probably revisiting that now. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I thought a big part of why Detroit Mercy was about to get out to a good start was because they threw so many different looks at MSU and forced turnovers. Is there anything schematically unique about them on either side of the ball, like a defense they like to run? Uh, they they switch it up, and as you mentioned, they went. You know, they were, they did some zone today. They did some uh, they did some man to man, and uh, you know it worked. I mean, I 
that was probably the bigger surprise to me, even more so than, you know, than finally seeing the depth on offense was how, how much defensively they were able to get done against Michigan State. Um, so uh, that's something to keep an eye on. I, I wasn't expecting that at all. I mean, Michigan State still, still scored 83 points, but uh, the first half defensively was very, very impressive. So um, schematically, I mean, they run them both. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see what they, what they use moving forward and if they continue to kind of mix it up a little bit. Yeah, I agree. I think it's going to be really interesting to watch um, on Sunday because Prentice Hub against Michigan State really struggled with turnovers. So if Detroit is going to mix it up like that, it could be a huge issue for Notre Dame. So, well, yeah, I think that I think the key on Sunday is going to be um, is going to be how Detroit Mercy bounces back or responds to this game. Uh, you know, because this was a big game for them, and not saying Notre Dame's not at all, but uh, you know, when you're you know 81 miles apart, you know, from Detroit to East Lansing. Um, this used to be a big rivalry in the 1990s. Actually, Detroit Mercy came into the game. They actually had won three of the last four games in the series, but they hadn't played a game since 2001. Uh, but they won three times against Michigan State in the 1990s. So this thing, this used to be a, a rivalry. So uh, you could tell that Detroit Mercy came to play and they were pumped up. And the key is going to be sustaining that uh, energy and, and that passion and grit. I really thought they were really gritty and played with a lot of heart tonight, especially – Again, when they lost their two bigs to foul trouble and still managed to stay in the game, the question is going to be if they can take this, uh, you know, same energy into Notre Dame, you know, it's a last minute addition to the schedule um, and see if they can kind of keep up the hype, I guess, um, going into that game. That's going to be key for them. I mean, obviously they're going to be able to hang with them if they play well. And Notre Dame, you know, was basically blown out by Michigan State uh, and uh, Detroit Mercy just went there and, and played Michigan State better than, Duke played Michigan State, and I really believe that. And um, so uh, it's just a matter of if they can keep that up and keep, you know, keep the momentum and that kind of have a little bit of a, of a letdown. Yeah, for sure. So you talked about kind of your worries. Uh, how worried do you think Notre Dame fans should be about Antoine Davis? I mean, tonight wasn't even one of his better games that I've seen. And no. he's 10 for 25, but he still was probably – I think he was their leading scorer, and he still looked unstoppable at times. So how worried do you think we should be about yeah. Well, I mean, he's the guy. I mean, but, you know, he's the guy you have to stop if you're going to beat Detroit Mercy. Um, and Michigan State did about as good, again, as good as they could have done. He led the team to scoring, but um, most of the shots he made were, were contested. And if not just contested, heavily contested. And he still led the team in scoring. So I think Michigan State did as good as they could have done. Uh, Notre Dame's going to have to do the same. Uh, I mean, if you leave this guy open, I mean, he can go off for 40 or 50 um, if you give him open looks. So uh, he's the guy. I mean, you, you with with Detroit Mercy, you start with him. And, it, you know, like I said, the previous two years, and Notre Dame saw this last year when the teams played, previous two years, you shut down Davis, you shut down Detroit, and you win rather easily. Now, clearly Detroit Mercy has shown that, you know, you start with Davis, you get him shut down as much as you possibly can. You're not going to silence him. He's going to get his 20 or 30 or whatever. Uh, but uh, as long as, you know, if you make him contested looks, you get him to miss, you know, as many shots as he did tonight. Uh, you know, that's a starting point. But, you know, there's clearly other weapons there that they're going to have to pay attention to. For sure. We saw a glimpse of him last year. I mean, he scored 27 against us. And this year we're probably yeah. a worst defensive team. So it's going to be going to be tough to stop him along with all those other weapons. But yeah. I'll go into some of my concerns later. But what's your biggest concern for Detroit Mercy heading into this game? Yeah, like I said, I mean, they're, they're still they still lack a little bit of depth. Uh, they got one guy. uh uh, Waterman that's still um, waiting for his NCAA um, another transfer waiting for his NCAA ruling I don't know why they're waiting to this point I mean these should have all been decided most of them have been decided so they, um, with him and you know with a couple other guys that have uh, you know there's been some contact tracing issues at, at Detroit because of the positive tests they did have with a staff member so they were they were a little shorthanded tonight uh, and so they do lack depth and you saw that um their starting five is good. The first few off the bench are good, um, but it doesn't go much beyond that. You saw a much deeper Michigan State team, and I think that with Detroit Mercy, they're going to have to stay out of foul trouble, clearly. Um, you can, you know, gripe about some of the whistles against Detroit Mercy tonight. There were a few that were questionable down the stretch, um, but uh, you have to stay out of foul trouble. Um, Davis played tentative, uh, on de especially on defense uh, in the second half. He played with three fouls in the first half. Uh, that can't happen, and you need your big guys to stay in, on the floor. If those big guys, if Ioni and, and, and Poole uh, both stay on the court, 
who knows? Michigan State might be uh, might be not undefeated anymore. So uh, that's going to be the key. Is that they got to they got to limit the fouls and they got to keep their big guys on the court. For sure. I wanted to touch on the waiver thing too because we're going through exactly the same thing with Trey Wirtz, who kind of reminds me of Antoine Davis, just a slower, not as quick version. But yeah, that's it. I don't want to dive too deep into that, but not not a fan of their process either. It's been just so weird, especially – especially it's been weird, especially this year. I mean, with everything, with COVID and everything, the NCAA like, should have just, you know, done the blanket waiver for everybody. Uh, they've basically done that. I think 90-some percent of the guys have had immediate eligibility, including uh, Matt Johnson, who uh, was one of the guys that played really well tonight. He got immediate eligibility. They found that out a couple of weeks ago. Still waiting on Waterman. Um, you know, the, the weird thing is, is the NCAA won't really explain what the difference is between this guy and that guy. Why, why are all these guys getting approved so easily? And then there's like a handful of guys that aren't. And it seems to go back to the previous school. If the previous school tries to fight it, then there's an issue. But, um, I mean, if you're really all about the student athletes, I don't understand what they're waiting for and all these guys. I mean, the season's underway. Make a call one way or the other. Yeah, for sure. It's insane to me that they haven't made a ruling yet. So now that we've talked about pretty much everything about Detroit Mercy, what do you think they have to do to beat Notre Dame in this game? Uh I mean, like I said, stay on the floor uh, and uh, get, you know, they got to get Antoine a few more open looks. And I mean, he was, I'm not even sure he had an open look other than maybe a couple layup, layups tonight uh, and still made just a ton of shots with guys in his, in his face. They got to find a way to get him more open looks. They got to stay on the floor. And uh, uh, if they stay on the floor uh, the, defensively, I think they can, they can uh, give Notre Dame some problems just like they did with Michigan state. So, but I think really it's all going to come down to keeping, you know, not letting this loss, you know, not having, you know, all your energy and all your momentum sapped by this one loss, you know, being able to get back up and get back out there and play with the same intensity against Notre Dame that you played with Michigan State. I think if they do that, they, they you know, that's going to be a game to watch on Sunday. Yeah, for sure. So before we let you go, we've heard a lot of insight from you. What's your prediction for this game? Oh, I have no idea. I only watched a little bit of the uh, Michigan State Notre Dame game. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm guessing it's going to be something similar to tonight, um, you know, with a, you know, a five to 10 point victory for Notre Dame in a game that's going to be interesting to watch. So I'll go with that. I don't know. I don't know Notre Dame well enough to really nail that down. I did see, like I said, a little bit of the Michigan State game, but I, I anticipate you might see something very similar to tonight. And if Detroit Mercy again fixes those couple issues, there could be an upset. Gotcha. Yeah, I think tonight definitely shaped my prediction also. I haven't locked one in yet, but Definitely going to be closer than I originally expected. So uh, if you have any other thoughts or if you don't have any other thoughts, I guess that's it. So thank you for coming on, man. And uh, let's see what happens Sunday. All right. Man. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Enjoy the game. All right. All right so now that we're taking a look at Detroit Mercy, let's go into the Notre Dame perspective of the game preview. So to start, I'm going to go with my keys to the game. My first one is first by a mile, limit turnovers. MSU had a really tough time with Detroit Mercy's length and athleticism on the perimeter. Even with guards like Rocket Watts, they had a really tough time. 19 turnovers, and for perspective, Notre Dame only forced 12 for them. Uh, Detroit Mercy also had nine steals included in those turnovers, so that's huge. Um, that's probably the main reason why they were able to stick around all game is just because of turnovers. Um, every other kind of stat in this game was favoring MSU maybe by far in all of them, but Detroit Mercy really hung around just because of the turn turnovers they were able to force. I think this was probably because of all the defenses they run, came out in a lot of zone, uh, switched to man a lot. I mean, they probably ran three or four, if not five different defenses throughout the game. So I think that's going to be huge for Notre Dame to stop. And second, I'm going to make, I'm going to say make Antoine Davis to take bad shots. I mean, he's still going to get 20-plus pretty much regardless of what you do. And I think it's pretty concerning that he dropped 27 on Notre Dame last year with Rex Fluger. And I think Carmody was healthy for that game also. And those are two of the best defenders on the team. So at least last year they were. This year Rex obviously isn't here. But I think they're going to have a really tough time, whether it's Cormac, Hub, Goodwin, maybe Sanders, maybe Joe go on him at times. I think they're going to have to make him take bad shots. Like MSU did, he only shot 10 for 25, and he had like 24 or 26 points. So I think that's going to be a huge key for them. 
to really stop him. You, well, you can't stop him, but make him take bad shots, slow him down a bit, and kind of mess with the momentum. It's going to be really tough, though, if you can't stop him and make him take bad shots because of all the pieces they have around him now. So I'm going to dive more into that in a couple minutes, but I think that's my second key. And then third is going to be get Durham, Loshesky, and Zona going. I mean, in Michigan State, they got killed on the boards. But I think this game could really be a nice one for them, considering how hard it is going to be for Hub and uh, Ryan and Goodwin to get going again. Just like Michigan State, long athletic guards that they're facing. And they're going to make it really tough on Hub. I wanted to touch on that a little bit, too. Hub had five turnovers against MSU. Not ideal at all. Uh, that's the number one thing I said I wanted to see from him this year was him limiting those turnovers. Even though his turnover numbers weren't that bad, you see games like Clemson, Duke, MSU where he just throws the game away at times, which you can't do, and he just did it already this season. So I think if he can really calm it down, slow it down, just go through the offense, go through the motions, um, that's going to be huge for us. So I wanted to touch on that. But back to Jeremy Loshevsky and Zona. Uh, they got killed on the boards, like I said, and I think this could be a really big game for them. I think the offense probably should run through them at times, considering who Detroit Mercy has out on the perimeter with Johnson Davis. And then my matchup to watch going to be Antoine Davis versus whoever guards him. Touched on this earlier, but no Carmody. Sanders doesn't really look ready. He got blown by by Jack Hoiberg, and that's not ideal at all. It was his first game, though, so give him time. But I think we're probably going to see a bit of Cormac on him. Hopefully that works. And then I don't know if Hub's really going to be on him much because, I mean, Hub's not the best defender we have. Goodwin kind of looked like a liability at times defensively against MSU. So I think we'll probably see a lot of Cormac on him. I wouldn't be shocked if Hub was on him also or Sanders or Jogo. But whoever's on him. Just slow him down, make him take bad shots. He had a bad night against MSU and still scored 24 points, and they had 76 as a team. So I don't think that's the number one thing anymore. Well, it is the number one thing, but I don't think that's the only thing you have to do to beat them anymore, which is kind of scary now. So that's going to be a huge matchup, and you have to stop them if you want to win against Detroit Mercy. So I think that's huge. And I alluded to it earlier, but my leading score, it's going to be either Durham or Lashevsky. Uh, when I Googled how tall the front line guys are for Detroit Mercy, they're listed at 6'7 and 6'8. So I think Lashesky and Durham and even Zona have a big height advantage on those two. So that can be huge. I know it's kind of a leap of faith to say Durham and Lashesky lead them in scoring after that performance on uh, a week from Saturday, I guess. But, yeah, it's it's going to be tough for them. Well, it's not going to be tough for them like it was against Michigan State, but I think this could be huge for them. Durham's got, what, three or four inches on Detroit Mercy Center, so that's going to be huge. Lashesky looked really good against Michigan State at times. I think he's really taken that next step, so looking forward to maybe this being a breakout game for him. And I think uh, Zona is also going to have a nice game. Maybe definitely not the leading scorer, but – I think this is going to be huge for him. Not great big men that are they're playing against, and he had a rough outing against MSU, so this could be a huge game for him also. But that's kind of all I have for this one. Thank you guys for watching. Go Irish, and hopefully we'll be back with an Ohio State preview in a day or two. So thank you guys for watching. Go Irish. Peace.